Hello, and welcome to another edition of 10 Tips in 10 Minutes. Today's subject is how to fail in business. Yes, you heard that correctly, how to fail. The presentation is a little bit tongue in cheek, I have to admit, but thousands and thousands, in fact, hundreds of thousands of businesses fail every year and they don't know why. So I thought it was my responsibility as a business mentor to actually put together a course on how to fail. So instead of doing a full-blown course, I decided to restrict this to 10 tips that will guarantee absolute failure if you follow these tips. I hope you enjoy this journey with me. It should be fun and I hope it will be instructional. On a first things first, these easy to follow tips will guarantee business failure. Uh, you can use all of them, uh, but you won't have to. In most cases, using just one or two of them will put you out of business. In some cases, just using one of them will even stop you from getting started. So we know that these tips work. I hope you enjoy this presentation and sincerely, I hope you don't follow these tips. This presentation does come with a warning. If you ignore the 10 tips I'm presenting, you may have business success. So let's get started. Tip number one on how to fail. Tip number one is one of my favorites. And as a business mentor, I come across this all the time. This one may not cause you to go out of business. It is the most likely reason that you'll never get started in the beginning. Lack of focus. Implement this tip and you don't have to worry about going out of business. You'll never be in business. Tip number two sounds very similar to tip number one, but it's actually more deadly. You're already in business and you're not focused. In fact, every new thing that comes along, every new shiny object you chase, this will use up your time, your money and your energy, and then you'll be out of business and broke. Tip number three. One of the saddest reasons for not starting a company is that you're so smart that you can't tell anybody about your idea. It's so secret and it's so good that if anybody ever heard about it, they would steal your idea and be a success overnight. The sad thing is you're probably not the smartest person in the world. You may be smart, but not the smartest person in the world. And everybody needs mentorship. Everybody needs to be able to write a business plan. Everybody needs to be able to talk through their ideas and develop them. Without doing that, you're never going to go into business. And in fact, your great idea will stay secret all the time. It's a really sad reason for not getting started. It's such a sad reason for not getting started that if that's your personality profile, that everything has to be secret, I would definitely keep your day job. Tip number four. I see this all the time. Build it and they will come. Actually, build it and they will come is another way of saying zero market research. You have a good idea. You haven't actually done your market research, so you don't know whether anybody wants it. But you're so confident that you know more than the intended customers why would you ask them? In fact, I've seen companies develop products with no market research. And I've seen them actually put lots of money into this, get the product, and then when the company fails, they actually blame the sales force for not being smart enough to find the right customers. This is a sort of lingering death. Uh, in fact, it gives you a false sense of confidence that you have something because you can see it. But really, it's a one-way ticket to the poorhouse. Use this one if you really want to fail. Now, on our journey to absolutely fail, tip number five is extremely common. Don't have a plan. No plan because you're too busy. You know what you're doing. You're shooting from the hip. The saddest part about having no plan is that when you do go out of business, you won't know why. Tip number six. I really do understand this one. Quitting your day job too soon. The reason I understand it and the reason it's common is that people get enthusiastic. Well, you need to temper the enthusiasm 
with reality. If you don't have the money and you quit your day job too soon, you're not going to have enough money to continue in business. And not only will you fail or not get started, you'll find yourself unemployed as well. Not very desirable. Tip number seven, not having a lawyer. Being your own lawyer because you think you can save money at the end of the day is short-sighted. You are able to actually get quite a long way with being your own lawyer. That's the truth of the matter. The sad part is once you've got a long way and you're doing well and something goes wrong, you may lose everything. Not having a lawyer, really not a good idea. Always get a lawyer before you need one. It's a bit like a seatbelt. No point in putting it on after the accident, is there? What else can I say about that one? Tip number eight in our series on how to fail. Get no mentoring. Every business needs a mentor. You need a wall to bounce off your ideas. You need other people that have been down a similar path. Really, if you don't want to fail, and this is about failing, if you don't want to fail, get a mentor to help you develop your ideas. If you are determined to fail, go it alone, fail alone, and when you do fail due to lack of a mentor, you'll never know why. What a wasted educational process that was. Get a mentor. Number nine on how to fail. Charge the lowest price and everybody will buy from you. I'm smiling at this one, but it's not even funny. Uh, this is a great way to go out of business. Charge the lowest price. Charging the lowest price means that you generally don't understand value. And the first time somebody actually reduces their price, another company, for example, you're out of business because you've got nowhere to go. This is a, a little bit like sailing a boat and you've put too many people in it. The first big wave that comes, comes over the bow of the boat and it sinks. That's what will happen to your business if you sell the lowest price. When you go out of business because you were charging the lowest price, you can actually blame other companies for taking advantage of you. Feels good, but it's not the real reason. Tip number 10. I have saved the best until last, and that is failure to recognize the fact that you're a salesperson. Anybody starting a company is involved in sales because you have to promote your idea and you have to actually give people a reason to know why they, your product or service is better than somebody else's. To reject the notion that you are in sales is just unbelievable. In fact, when I teach classes uh, to com people thinking of starting up a company, I ask them, how many of you uh, believe that you're now in sales? I get almost no hands. When I see that, I fully realize that this is where my work is cut out for me on persuading them to see themselves as salespeople. When you do go out of business because you reject the notion that you're a salesperson, you can always say the salespeople from the other companies put me out of business. And you know what? It's absolutely true. Well, I hope you enjoyed this presentation on how to fail. Um, I think it's appropriate at this point to give you a warning that if you actually do the opposite of what I've suggested in these tips, you might actually be successful. Now, I think we all realize that the presentation was tongue in cheek, but there is a level of seriousness to it. The fact is hundreds of thousands of businesses fail. Please don't be one of them. Thank you. Tip number three, well, this is for, seriously?
snowplow, I think. Mm. This presentation does come with a warning. And the warning is, if you do not follow the... the mm. Tip number eight. I see this often as well, but not as often as I should. Blah, blah, blah.